Hey everybody, I'm back again for another video uh, about an hour ago. Put up a review of John Lennon's Imagine album. Uh, actually, it's two videos. The video froze about midway through and instead of going back and doing all that all over again, I just made a second video picking up where I left off. But um, yeah, so I'm reviewing John's albums in the order of release. I've been doing that with the whole solo Beatles catalog i've done all the paul the george and the ringo albums already so those are also up there if you're interested and now i'm in the process of going through john's albums so check that stuff out if you if you care if you're interested this is another beetle related video this is inspired by matthew street's response to a stephen snee video so been subscribed to matthew street's channel for a while now great guy huge Beatle fan so you get a lot of Beatle content he knows his stuff makes good videos if you haven't checked out Matthew Street's channel go over there watch some of the videos subscribe entertaining informative and uh, good stuff same thing with Steven I was not familiar with him before I watched uh, Matthew's response video after I watched it I went over and watched some of his videos and uh, great stuff too another guy knows his stuff and good taste in music and got some Beatle content on there but you also got just a, a whole lot of other bands that he talks about he's he's into a whole lot of good music so makes videos on just just a little bit of everything there and uh, his uh, name is S-T-E-P-H-E-N his last name is S-C-H-N-E-E -E. as Stephen Snee he calls himself the CD Junkie but you can just look him up by his name and you'll find his channel and um, Stephen, uh, what Matthew Street was responding to was that Stephen had asked a question. It's not a contest. It's not a prize. It's just uh, just a question he wa asked and wants people to respond to see uh, what people think. The question is, what is your favorite Beatles solo album? And it's not what's your favorite John album, what's your favorite Paul album, your favorite you know George and Ringo album. It's just out of all how many there are, like 100 or whatever there are solo Beatle albums. Out of all of those, what's your what's your favorite of the bunch? And it, while it can be, it, it's also not necessarily what do you think the best Beatles solo album is because what you think is the best one may not necessarily be your favorite one. So, for example, my choice of the best Beatles solo album would come down to all Things Must Pass or Plastic Ono Band. Imagine and Ram might be in the mix for that spot. Love all those albums and um, love them dearly. If I was ranking the Beatle albums, they would be way, way up there toward the top. Uh, none of them are my favorite, though, even though I play them often and love them dearly. So my favorite, and I almost didn't do this contest, and the reason why is when... I was watching Matthew's video, and he said, you know, the question is, what's your favorite Beatle solo album? I immediately, the choice popped into my head, and I thought, okay, that's good. I'm going to do this, and I'll make a video after I watch Matthew's video. Well, darned if Matthew didn't pick the choice I was thinking of. I thought, well, uh. So I went over to Steven's channel and watched his original video where he asked the question, and darned if he didn't pick the same album I was thinking of and the same album that Matthew Street picked as well. So I thought, you know, that's just redundant. Why bother when they've already picked this choice? But then I thought, well, you know, all of my subscribers, all four of them, maybe they're not subscribed to Matthew Street or Stevens Sneeze channel, so they wouldn't know their choice anyway. And what the hell, I just have fun and want to do it. So, that's what I'm doing. So my choice for my favorite Beatle album, Beatle, my favorite solo Beatle album, 1979, Back to the Egg by Paul McCartney and Wings. And, um, well, I'm, you know, if I was to, had to pick the best Paul album, in my opinion, it'd be Ram. But if I was ranking the Paul albums, this would come in number two or three. Uh, anyway, but just overall Beatles solo albums, the one that uh, I love the most, I, 
I don't say I play it the most because I play a ton of Beatles solo albums all the time, but this is like just keep going back to and just great memories, great music. I, like I said, I've reviewed all of Paul's albums, so I did a review of this, um, I don't know, a year, however long ago it was. I'm not going to go through and get into all the details and review the whole album again. If you're interested, uh, feel free to go over and watch the video where I reviewed this. Um, this came out in 79, like I said, I would have been, I don't remember what month it came out, but I would have been 15 or 16. This was probably the third solo Beatle album that I bought brand new when it was released. The first would have been London Town, and the second would have been George Harrison's self-titled album. I was already buying solo Beatle albums before that, but I was buying the ones that had come out, you know, three, four, whatever years earlier. And so it was kind of exciting to buy these when they were brand new and just in the shop. Uh, I was not... Well, I'm still not a huge fan of Wings at the Speed of Sound, other than maybe a couple of two or three songs on it. Uh, I've always considered that one of Paul's weaker or you know, weakest albums, maybe even. Uh, I liked London Town quite a bit when it came out. like it a lot more now. love it now, as a matter of fact. But at the time, with what was going on in music, you know, The Clash and Elvis Costello and Sex Pistols and The Jam and all the, the great punk rock and new wave and music being exciting again in a way that it hadn't been, in my opinion, since the 60s. Um, I remember thinking when I got London Town that, you know, this is some good music, some nice ballads and all, but I wish that uh, Paul would have uh, put a little more rock and roll in this album. I wish it a little grittier, a little more... Uh, driving, rocking, pounding, rock and roll, which London Town, as much as I love it, doesn't really have. Uh, you know, I've had enough. It's about as close as it comes, and that's pretty, pretty weak tea when it comes to rock and roll. So this one, though, and uh, I just remember, I think I heard one or two of the songs on the radio before I actually got the album. I got it, I don't know the day it came out, but I got it like the week it came out anyway but so most of this was brand new to me when I went to the record store and got it and walked home and put it on the turntable and it's just uh, I just love this album start to finish I mean there's there's uh, hardly a weak, uh, weak link or a dog on it it's just this great uh, rock and roll and power pop and Paul and his punk phase and yeah, you can argue that, you know, Paul was 30 whatever years old when he made this and wasn't 20 years old like he was 10 years earlier and um, he wasn't 20 years old like the the Clash and the Jam and the Specials and the Elvis Costello and all those guys that were in their prime in 1979. Uh, so, you know, is it really punk and new wave or is it just Paul jumping on the bandwagon I don't know fair criticism maybe maybe not I I don't really care all I know is that I loved all the songs on this album pretty much anyway and loved them in 1979 loved them all through the years love them now I just played this album here a couple of days ago and it's still a blast it takes me back uh, to being 16 it takes me back to 1979 and, um, you know, really on this album, the only thing, Rockester theme is boring. It's not terrible. I can sit through it. It doesn't bother me. Um, uh, wish he would have left it off and put Goodnight Tonight on here instead. But, you know, you've got rock, you got power pop, you got, if you want to call it punk and new wave, Paul, genuine article or not, who knows? I don't care. But you've got your ballads. You've got, I mean, Arrow Through Me is just a weird sort of strange song. I love it to death. Again and again and again is Danny Lane's, I think, finest moment in Wings. Uh, one of my favorite songs on the album. Uh, Old Siam, Sir, just blew me away the first time I heard it. You, and even you got some of the lazy Paul silly lyrics. My Salamander, you know, kind of cringeworthy. But Getting Closer is such a great song that I could overlook it and I didn't care. Uh, 
you know, and everything on here I really love. Just I love the opening, the reception, the radio static and play that goes into getting closer. Uh, just just everything. Rockster theme, like I said, kind of sucks, but it, it's, I can live with it. And it's just uh, it's just a great sort of a power pop album, I guess, more than anything. Good rock. I like the cover. I thought it was cool when I was 16 years old. Maybe, you know, when I'm 56, it's a little silly. But it was the 70s, and it worked for me, and I was a kid, and so it was great. This is uh, not the copy I bought in 1979. I don't know what happened to that. This is one that I got at Half Price Books, uh, I don't know, a long time ago. I've had this for a long time. Looks like it's been run over by a dump truck, but uh, it plays fine. The record plays fine, and that's what counts. So, yeah, that's my choice. I will say I was really disappointed because last year, word was originally that the Archive Edition albums this year were going to be Back to the Egg in London Town, and I was really excited. So, like I said, I love both of those albums. I was all ready to run out and buy it when they finally announced the release date, but then came word that instead of those, it's going to be Flaming Pie, which... Mm, I'll buy it, but I'm really hoping that next year, Back to the Egg and London Town 2 will be the choices, because I'm looking forward to getting them. This, uh, I just, I mean, just, just for the record, I just, as far as the, the music on the record, I just always love this album, and uh, it just came out at a good time. I think I was uh, born in 1963, so I was there, but, you know, too young to really appreciate it, but from time I was a little kid I've always loved 60s music Beatles Kinks Rolling Stones Paul Revere and the Raiders Motown all that stuff wasn't a fan of what's known as classic rock now that 70s uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac Boston Foreigner uh, Eagles all that stuff never did anything for me then doesn't do anything for me now so I was really excited about the time I was in seventh and eighth grade when music in my opinion, started getting exciting again with punk and new wave. And I just think that that period of 78 to about 84, 85, after that it falls off. But I think that period of music is just some great stuff and really exciting and probably the most exciting period of music other than the 60s, in my opinion. And so this was part of it. And I'm glad that I was, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever I was, ages I was in that period to enjoy it and this was a big part of it um, you know Cheap Tricks Live at Budokan came out that year uh, Elvis Costello was just getting into discovering The Clash and all those bands and this was part of that mix and uh, so that would be my choice of my favorite Beatles solo album so like I said go check out Matthew Street and Stephen Snee's channels and uh watch some good videos and subscribe to them and uh, if you're interested make a video response to let Steven and everyone else know what your favorite Beatles solo album is I'd be interested to hear what other people what their choices are and why, why they pick them and what they think so that's all I got see you next time Ta.